Most of the manga series I've read tend to skew towards action, psychological drama, or some hybrid of the two. I enjoy these genres a lot, and they've produced some of my favorite works of all time. But there's really nothing quite like the feeling I get from reading a story by Nagata Kabi. Hi my friends, I'm Mike and welcome to the Lion's Lounge. Today we'll be talking about the four main works by mangaka Nagata Kabi and why I love her series so much. And today we'll be doing something a little different in honor of her most recent book, My Alcoholic Escape from Reality, Making Mocktails or Non-Alcoholic Cocktails. I also want to note that I won't be diving too deep into her books, mainly because I want to give you a chance to read them yourselves. Rather, this is going to be sort of an overview of each one. So strap in and let's go. To start things off, Nagata Kabi's major works are all dramatized autobiographies, with the first one being My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. The book follows Kabi as she struggles to manage her anxiety and depression, and attempts to find some semblance of happiness. And this begins with her choosing to meet a call girl. Now you may be wondering, how do you get from the start of the story to here? Well, it's clear that Kabi suffers from loneliness and desperately wants physical interaction. More specifically, she has no sexual experience and feels if she gains it, it'll help with her confidence. And it kinda does. While it's clear that her experience was awkward and intimidating, after reflecting on it, she comes to realize what these interactions are actually about and finds that she wants to write about her journey in this very manga, the positive feedback from which greatly improves her mental health. This book took me by surprise when I first read it for how intimate and real it was. Yet it's presented in such an honest and heartfelt way, I was completely drawn in. So if you're interested in checking out her works, my lesbian experience with loneliness is a great place to start. So this first mocktail is a blackberry mojito variation and basically substitutes the liquor with club soda. So to start this off, take a cocktail shaker and add three blackberries, then three mint leaves. Next, a quarter ounce or seven and a half milliliters of simple syrup then gently muddle. Next, add half an ounce or 15 milliliters of fresh lime juice. Add some ice and shake for about 12 seconds. Crack some ice into a rocks glass and double strain into the glass. Then simply top this up with some club soda. This is gonna be to eye, but it's about four ounces or 120 milliliters. Give it a gentle stir to incorporate the ingredients. And lastly, garnish it with a blackberry and a mint sprig. And there you have the blackberry mojito mocktail. Cheers. Whew. It's actually a lot sweeter than I thought it was gonna be. So does this 100% taste like a mojito? Well, no, but it does taste like a sweetie minty seltzer, which is really good actually. The mint garnish as well is also pretty nice because you just get that, that hint of mint in your face right when you go to lift the glass. While initially the blackberry isn't present, it comes in right away and it's very good. Overall, I'm surprisingly happy with this. It's really delicious and I'm probably gonna finish it after this recording. So the sequel to My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness came out about a year later and was split into two parts, together titled My Solo Exchange Diary. In this series, we follow Kabi after her success with her previous work and how she's attempting to further improve herself as well as write a new story. Working with her editor, they find that Kabi had written a diary to herself when she was younger and suggested her next work be in this format. And so each chapter of My Solo Exchange Diary not only lists Kabi's experiences, but also lessons to her future self gained from those experiences, such as the strength she needs to be able to live alone and discovering that true love means you need to love yourself as well as your partner and to take care of your own well-being and not just focus solely on others. Like her previous story, it's very personal and Kabi doesn't shy away from talking about her history with self-harm and how she's still battling with depression. Something that especially hit me towards the end of the first book and into the second. Overall, it's a fantastic sequel and one I was really happy to have read. So this next mocktail is actually pretty easy as it's just a Moscow Mule variation. To start, add some cracked ice to a highball glass. Then add one ounce or 30 milliliters of fresh lime juice. Next, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup. Lastly, top it up with some ginger beer, which I recommend Fever Tree if you can get it. Give it a quick stir to incorporate the ingredients. And then I'm just gonna garnish it with some mint and some lime slices. And there you have the non-alcoholic Moscow Mule. Cheers. 
still really good. The great thing about the Moscow Mule is that because it usually calls for vodka, you don't really taste the vodka. Yes, depending on the vodka, it can be a little boozy, but typically the ginger beer overpowers the rest of the ingredients. So this is a perfect cocktail to make non-alcoholic. And honestly, I can't tell there's no alcohol in this. It just tastes like a Moscow Mule to me. Very good. The lime juice goes so well with the ginger beer and then that little bit of mint right there, right in your face, it's just fantastic. Before my final drink, I wanna talk about Kabi's most recent book, My Alcoholic Escape from Reality. In this story, Kabi shares how she spent nearly two weeks in the hospital with pancreatitis due to massively over-drinking over the span of three years. And after suffering through the ordeal, is told she can no longer drink again. Kabi realizes though that her alcohol dependency makes it difficult to quit as she'd often turn to drinking when feeling anxious, depressed, or really just bored, and isn't able to see life without it. But after finding alternatives and reducing how much she drinks in general, she learns to strike a balance between drinking and over-drinking, which she then turns into fuel for this story. What's also interesting is that she talks about wanting to move away from writing memoirs to fiction. But the stress in writing these stories helped contribute to her drinking. Once she accepts she enjoys sharing her experiences in her works, her well-being greatly improves. All of these stories are incredible. And each new book Kabi releases, I instantly pick up. So this last non-alcoholic drink is a lemon lavender mocktail. To start, take a cocktail shaker and add 3 quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half milliliters of lavender simple syrup. This is really just simple syrup made with lavender petals. I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description below. Next, two ounces or 60 milliliters of lemon juice. And lastly, just a bar spoon of grenadine. Add some ice and shake for a few seconds. Then strain this into a Nick and Nor glass. And this cocktail goes ungarnished. And there you have the lemon lavender mocktail. Cheers. Oh, very delicious. You probably won't be surprised that this combination basically tastes like a tea. The lemon juice and lavender simple syrup make it very sweet and plus the lavender from that lavender simple syrup gives it a floral note. That hint of grenadine just kind of gives it a little bit more tartness, but it doesn't throw off the balance of the drink. I've made a similar cocktail before, but I can tell you this doesn't taste quite like it. And the main reason is that cocktail included gin, which adds some botanicals to the drink which was very good, but it also makes it very different because this one leans on the more lemony sweet side and that one is more on the herbal side. Overall, a very great mocktail and one I'm very happy with. So today we made three incredible mocktails in honor of Nagatakabi's works. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. If you have any cocktails you'd like me to make based on your favorite series, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see what I make outside this channel, Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion or Instagram at Mr. Space Lion. But thank you so much for stopping by the Lions Lounge. I've been your bartender, Mike, and I hope to see you next time.